Series 4's new in Unity 5.6. The beta is out already and the full version will be released the 31st this month. A lot of exciting stuff, so let's get into it. So the first improvements are three features that will definitely speed up the lighting workflow. The Light Explorer is a brand new window that gives an overview of all the lights in a scene. You know how light can either be baked into a light map or updated in real time? Well now Unity is reintroducing mixed mode, a mix between baked and real time lighting. For static objects, the light is baked into the light map, but dynamic objects still cast real time shadows. Progressive Light Mapper. Unity now quickly baked a low resolution light map for the part of the scene you're looking at. This allows you to see changes almost immediately and then the light map increases in quality until it's fully baked. This feature is not part of the beta but will be out with the full release. Next 5.6 is set out to improve AI pathfinding with a reworked nav mesh system. From now on you can have multiple nav meshes in a scene and orient them in any given direction. In addition, the path can now be updated in real time which is great for dynamic terrain or procedurally generated levels. Of course 5.6 also comes with a bunch of graphical improvements such as GPU instancing and compute shaders along with a performance increase for the particle system. Oh, and Unity finally got support for Vulkan. Vulkan is a graphics API that is really efficient at taking advantage of multiple CPU cores, which means that it can free up processing power on some platforms. Vulkan will run on Android, Windows, Linux and Tizen. The video player has been rebuilt from scratch to play 4K videos, which is great for 360 VR. A debug view for physics geometry has been added. Features that improve 2D game making include Axis Distance Sort, which helps solve the axis sorting problems by enabling you to set the transparency sort mode to a custom axis. You can use the sorting group component to render a set of objects separately from others on the same sorting layer. 2D physics improvements, where the biggest one for me is probably the Composite Collider 2D, which allows you to merge different types of colliders into one in real time. And to the 2D artists, rejoice, we now have 9 slice. If you don't know, 9 slice is a technique for stretching or repeating defined areas of a sprite. This means that we can create very small textures that can be easily manipulated and resized. Great for platforms. Other than that, the beta now includes Google Daydream and Cardboard VR support. You'll also be able to deploy your projects to the new Facebook Game Room desktop app for Windows or to Facebook.com using Unity's WebGL support. Unity Collaborate is Unity's relatively new cloud-based service that allows small teams to sync and share a project. It's basically just Unity's own version control system, and so far it's been lacking, but they are now introducing partial publish and the ability to roll back changes. It probably won't get me to leave Git just yet, but we're getting closer. Finally, and this is something that I'm super excited about, Unity is working on implementing the public editor extension TextMesh Pro into Unity. As an avid TextMesh Pro user, it's great to see Unity accepting that their text editing tools are really subpar. Also, TextMesh Pro is now free on the Asset Store. That's pretty much it for version 5.6, along with a bunch of smaller changes and bug fixes, of course. However, Unity has also teased two new features that will be coming sometime in 2017. The first one is Timeline, a cinematic sequencer tool. Timeline allows you to easily create interactive cutscenes or scripted events with access to some really nice camera tools. So far, Timeline looks really interesting and well done. The second feature is something that has only been discussed pretty vaguely. It's a fully multi-threaded job system enabling better use of multi-core CPUs. A lot of unanswered questions on this one. I'm excited to see where Unity will take it. It could definitely lead to some really nice performance improvements. If you want to read more about 5.6, Timeline or anything else I've talked about in this video, I will have links in the description. This video is of course a bit different from the usual tutorial so please let me know if you like it and want to see more. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome people who donated in February, and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Callahan, and Jason Latito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot guys.